you've probably heard of the Outback, right? No, I'm not talking about the restaurant. No, I'm not talking about the car either. No, that's an outhouse. There you go. That is the world famous Australian Outback, known for its vast and sparsely populated area that takes up the majority of the country. Did you know though that Oregon has an Outback that takes up the majority of our state? It's very similar to the version down under. It's vast, desolate, dry, sparsely populated, but visited by a lot of people because it's actually pretty cool. And I'm gonna introduce you to the Outback of Eastern Oregon so that you can determine, could you live here? Let's start with a quick but super interesting look back at when life began out here, and I am talking way back. So check this out. Just recently, in July of 2023, archaeologists unearthed evidence in Eastern Oregon near the town of Riley, which is a stretch to even call it a town because it's literally just a gas station and a post office out there for the ranchers, but Anyways, uh, they found evidence out there though that is absolutely rewriting history, okay? They found a rim rock draw rock shelter with objects including some with camel tooth enamel fragments and a human made tool buried deep inside this rock shelter uh, that had been buried under ash from an eruption of Mount St. Helens that they know took place over 15,000 years ago. Okay, I've been in Oregon a pretty long time and I haven't seen a camel since well, ever, okay? <laughs> They're estimating those objects to be over 18,000 years old, making it one of the oldest known sites of human occupation in North America. That's pretty cool. So from 18,000 years ago to the early 1800s, Eastern Oregon was pretty much the land of the local tribes. Then in the early 1800s, the Oregon Trail came through and most of the people just kept on walking right through. They were like, we didn't ride 2,000 miles in a den covered wagon fording rivers, shooting buffalo, and battling dysentery to settle some dry, windy sagebrush flat out here. Take me to the ocean. But the people who initially settled Eastern Oregon were the ranchers who needed giant swaths of land for their cattle and their sheep. And they'd have thousands of head of cattle and sheep out there grazing tens of thousands of acres of land. And they did that for a really, really long time, and that's still going on a lot today. In fact, agriculture and ranching are the two primary economic drivers in Eastern Oregon. The timber industry actually had a pretty good run, but from the 1920s to the 1980s, it seemed like every decade or so, they had some sort of a major setback with mills and different things going on there um, that, that never really allowed it to fully get operating to its, its true potential. But agriculture still remains the king out there. But tourism is actually really picking up steam in Eastern Oregon. For example, the Sylvie's Ranch, north of Burns, Oregon, is a 150,000 acre ranch that is one of the top 10 resorts in America, according to Condé Nast. They offer world-class golfing and horseback riding and even a goat herding experience, if that's something you've been searching for. That would actually be a fun one to surprise the wife with on Christmas. <laughs> hey honey, I got us a three night stay to the Sylvie's Ranch with a goat herding experience. <laughs> I actually kind of want to do that now. Anyways, the Sylvie's Ranch is on the map and it is incredible, okay? So is the town of Joseph, Oregon and Willowa Lake. Uh, they call the nearby Eagle Cap Mountains the Oregon Alps and they're really, really stunning and attracting a lot of visitors for hiking and camping and just checking out the area. It's really, really gorgeous. And that's the same with Pendleton, Oregon and the Pendleton Roundup Festival that happens every year there. It's really attracting a lot of people. So there's a lot of really cool small towns and events to visit, but if you're more interested in the nature side of things, Eastern Oregon is gonna absolutely blow your mind. It's a very, very popular destination amongst the overlanding community. You know, those $200,000 Sprinter vans you see with all those stickers on the back. Those people love Eastern Oregon. The Christmas Valley sand dunes, the Painted Hills, Owyhee Canyon, the Alvord Desert, Steens Mountain and the Kiger Gorge, all the way to Hell's Canyon and the beautiful Snake River. There are just an endless amount of fantastic places to see and to camp and just enjoy the beautiful outdoors of Eastern Oregon. And remember how I said it's desolate? You could spend an absolute lifetime out there and never camp 
in the same place twice and always be miles away from the next closest person and you can see stars and stuff like you've never seen before. It's unreal. There's actually two YouTube channels who did really incredible videos about their overlanding trips to Eastern Oregon and I'll include links to those in the description of this video but they do a really great job of just showing footage of what the area is and just all the beauty that you have out there. It truly is a wonderful place to visit and I'm fortunate enough to be able to go at least a couple times a year primarily for those goat roundups. Just kidding. Um, I go out there for hunting and, and I'll tell you the hunting in Eastern Oregon isn't terrible either. I mean it is terrible and you definitely want to go hunt a different area like Nevada or Idaho or somewhere far away from Eastern Oregon. <laughs> But for real, the fishing and hunting opportunities throughout Eastern Oregon truly are spectacular. From the beautiful Rocky Mountain elk to bighorn sheep to mule deer and antelope and chucker and quail and grouse and so on. There's a lot of different great opportunities out there. Something else Eastern Oregon is known for is an event that took place back in 2016 that made national headlines. And that was the occupation of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. Now, it gets pretty political, so exactly what happened and why probably depends on who you ask, but here's some facts, okay? A few years before the occupation, a local rancher and his son were convicted of arson for setting fires on federal land, uh, and, and they were sentenced to prison, one of them for three months and one of them for a year. And there's a documentary that talks all about why they set those fires and felt justified in doing so, uh, but essentially it was to, to do a backburn to prevent a larger fire from burning up all of their land, uh, if I remember right. But I really do suggest checking out that documentary because it's, it's pretty interesting. Especially if you're not used to what life is like in rural America where you're kind of left to just defend yourself in your own land. But anyways, I'll have a link to that in the description of this video. But three years later after that, an appeals court overturned those sentences uh, and a federal judge issued five year sentences with credit for the time that they had already served. So that got people pretty riled up. Uh, and on January 1st of 2016, about 300 folks got together to protest those sentences. A subgroup of them uh, took off and decided to you know, take an after party over to the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge about 30 miles away. They set up shop there to demonstrate their dissatisfaction with the decision. They were pretty heavily armed. They were posting on social media. Uh, and that group grew uh, and tensions got hotter and eventually it led to the FBI shooting one of those occupants. Uh, really a, a sad story. Obviously there's a lot more to the story, uh, but if you're interested in that, there's I'll post a link to the documentary uh, in the details here because it really is a, a fascinating one to watch. It talks about just the way of life uh, in Eastern Oregon and you can check that out for free here on YouTube. And you would think that's the craziest situation to happen out here in little old Eastern Oregon, but it's, it's not, it's not even close. Uh, the most wild and crazy situation is so much wilder and actually had a documentary created about it named Wild Wild Country. It's that insane. And what I'm talking about is the Rajneeshi movement that happened back in the 1980s. Okay, essentially a religious group or cult, I think is probably safe to call them, uh, called the Rajneeshis, they purchased a 64,000 acre ranch out near Antelope, Oregon, which is out literally in the middle of nowhere. And they turned it into a city of about 7,000 people with restaurants and houses and a fire department, and police and an airstrip and a sewage plant and a reservoir and on and on, right? Um, well, if you've watched any of my videos about buying property in rural land, you know that land use rules are important. Uh, and the county had some beef with these guys just up and building a city uh, in an area that wasn't zoned to allow that to happen. So the Rajneeshi decided that they were gonna get the laws changed by voting in uh, one of their own into the local government. And so to do that, they bust in thousands of homeless people from around the country, gave them food and shelter in exchange for their vote. Uh, and that's voting voter fraud. So uh, anyways, I don't wanna spoil the whole thing for you, but I, it didn't really end well for the Rajneeshis. Uh, they're not there anymore, <laughs> needless to say. And it's just a, a fascinating story um, of how it all went down in a little quiet Eastern Oregon, which was making big headlines back there in the 80s. Well, the area does have a lot going for it with the natural beauty, the privacy, and just that old fashioned way of life. But obviously that's not for everyone, okay? So if this area is calling your name, but it's just maybe a little too remote or too wild, there are a couple other options for you, okay? And one of them is Southern Oregon which is the Medford and Grants Pass area. It's close enough to be able to make a nice weekend trip out to the desert. Uh, and that's what we call Eastern Oregon around here. But in Southern Oregon, you have all the amenities that you're probably accustomed to, like an airport, uh, hospital, good schools, Costco. 
right? Choices when it comes to housing, good weather, uh, where it's not, you know, just dusty and dry and windy all the time, and a low cost of living compared to most of the other population centers of the state. So Southern Oregon could really be a great option for you if you want to be able to be, you know, close to Eastern Oregon, but not in Eastern Oregon. Central Oregon is another good option for you, and that's the Bend and Redmond and Lapine area. Uh, and it has a lot of the same things as Southern Oregon in terms of, you know, the schools and the hospitals and the shopping and all those sorts of things, but it's all just at a higher price point, okay? Both are great options if you want to have good access to the incredible Oregon Outback without actually living there. So if you'd like to learn, buy, or list real estate in any of these areas, please don't hesitate to reach out because I would love to help you with that. And one more piece of advice I have for you is to check out this video right here that's all about buying a home in the country. So if you've ever thought about that, this is the video that you absolutely must watch. It has some really critical advice for you uh, for buying a home in the country. Again, I'm Brian Simmons, I'm with eXp Realty, and I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video.